We begin in Northern California, where more than 600 people are now listed as missing as a result of the campfire. Earlier in the week, less than 150 people were considered unaccounted for. Authorities also said seven more bodies have been recovered, increasing the number of victims to 63. In the eastern part of the country, at least eight deaths are being blamed on an unusually early and intense pre-winter storm. It brought snow, sleet and freezing rain to much of the Midwest and Northeast. The storm system also knocked out power to some 200,000 homes and businesses. Closer to home, a suspect from a shooting in Billings earlier this week is now behind bars after he was taken into custody in Gallatin County. 30-year-old William Rogers was found hiding in a basement Thursday morning after leading police on a pursuit. Billings police tell us Rogers is the suspect in Wednesday morning shooting near North Park that left a 37-year-old man with a gunshot wound to his lower body. Rogers will be charged in Gallatin County for the pursuit before he faces charges and billings for the shooting. Continuing our coverage, authorities have identified the man who died in a Shepherd House fire earlier this month as 58-year-old Floyd Hynek. They say he died from carbon monoxide poisoning due to smoke and soot inhalation and was so badly burned he had to be identified by dental records. Two dogs also died in the fire. The cause is still under investigation. Montana Governor Steve Bullock has unveiled his proposed state budget for the next two years. It includes a freeze in state college tuition, increased funds for preschool, and extends Medicaid expansion, which is set to expire in June. It also includes a $290 million infrastructure program with one segment focused on oil and gas areas of eastern and northern Montana. Also in the budget proposal, $100 million worth of higher taxes or fees on lodging, rental cars, liquor, investment licenses, and tobacco. The Democratic governor says he hopes to work with the legislature to convince them some taxes are worth the investment in Montana. Leaders of the 2019 legislature's Republican majority have said they don't intend to approve any tax hikes. Meanwhile, the man who has worked as Billings City Administrator since January is celebrating his retirement. A party for Bruce McCandless was held on Thursday. McCandless started as Assistant City Administrator in 1990, left in 1994, returned to Billings in 1998, and returned to working with the city in 2000. He has also worked in Kansas, Idaho, Michigan, and Colorado. He says he enjoyed time with residents, the city council, and city workers. It sounds kind of cliche, but really it's the people that I get to work with. Our city employees are just so dedicated to the work that they do, and we need to be better at telling our, our story and, and good news stories. It has been such a pleasure working for the city. The job has been rewarding. Uh, it's given me the, 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 the pay that um, has allowed me to support my family well. Today is his last official day on the job. He says he and his wife of 31 years, Cheryl, will continue living in Billings and he may consider serving on a city advisory board. And while the career for one city worker ends, another begins. Meet Tabasco, the fifth canine to be added to the Billings Police Force. Officer Jared Lausch is Tabasco's handler. Tabasco is a Belgian Melanois. He comes all the way from the Netherlands and specializes in drug detection. Lausch and Tabasco spent a month training together in Pennsylvania and have been working the streets together for three weeks. Officer Lausch says he came up with the name Tabasco because of the canine's spicy personality. In their first 10 days together, Lausch said they went on 14 drug seizure calls and on their first day, Tabasco sniffed out 102 grams of meth. Now we go to Yellowstone National Park where officials are investigating a New York photographer who posted drone photos taken in the park last week. It is illegal to fly drones in most national parks, Yellowstone included. MTN's John Shear reports. Thermal features like these here at Mammoth Hot Springs along with animals are the big draw for Yellowstone Park and the strongest supporters of the park keep a close eye on how visitors treat these rare treasures. The photo was posted uh, on Instagram and stewards of the park shared the photo with us 
and then we were able to share it with law enforcement arrangers so they could initiate an uh, investigation. The photo is no longer on Instagram, but the photographer, Tim McGurr, has left his comments about the incident on his account. And he's unapologetic, telling critical posters, quote, people hiking and driving through the park create more of a disturbance than I did or ever will, end quote. Worthen disagrees, saying park employees have witnessed wildlife being harassed by drones and more. There have also been small drones that have actually been located in, in a Yellowstone geysers. Uh, they're also a, they're a safety concern. McGurr says he entered the park overnight, the last day of the fall season, and waited until dawn to take his photo. He said the gates were locked when he tried to leave, so he found another way out. He doesn't explain what that other way was. We thank those stewards of Yellowstone who are online watching, seeing photographs that were taken illegally and sharing that with us. Violating the no drone policy in the park is a misdemeanor. It carries a penalty of up to six months in jail and a fine of up to $5,000. Now in the past, some who have violated this policy have also had their privilege of visiting the park revoked for a number of years. That is up to the judge in the case. And in this case, the judge would be a federal judge because Yellowstone is federal property. At Mammoth Hot Springs, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Now back here in Billings, 10 months after the historic Babcock Theater closed for renovations, today is the day it reopens with modern touches and vintage charm. Q2 got an inside look before the ribbon gets cut later today. The 1907 Movie Palace is being restored to its original glory, but with a few 21st century updates. New carpet, paint, concessions, 4K laser projection, and surround sound are all new features inside the Babcock. The theater seats 750 and is deemed the largest movie palace in the state of Montana. The Babcock will be open seven days a week and plays major box office hits. The official ribbon cutting is set for 6 o'clock this evening with the inaugural Indiana Jones movie starting at 7 o'clock. Customers of Lucky's Market no longer have to leave their home to shop the aisles of the natural grocery chain. Lucky's has launched a partnership with the delivery app Shipped that will offer same-day delivery of their products to consumers in six states and 18 cities. Billings is the only market in Montana where this service will be available. Shoppers can sign up at Lucky'sMarketDelivers.com. First-time subscribers to the service can get an entire year of grocery deliveries for $49, down from the normal price of $99. Subscribers get a year of unlimited deliveries, over $35. Lucky's is not the only grocery store delivering, offering delivery services and billings. Evergreen IGA has an in-house delivery service offering delivery for $8 in order. A new restaurant opens up in downtown Billings and its building is filled with history. The Firehouse Restaurant and Bakery is located in the old O'Donnell Firehouse built in 1929. The name pays homage to those firemen and indicates the type of food they serve. Ryan Hall and his wife took over the business from Rude Boys and named it to reflect their cuisine. The Firehouse will feature spicy food from around the world like a coconut curry pork, poblano pepper burgers and wasabi alfredo dishes. I joined the Downtown Billings Alliance in September, um, and I know those guys have big plans for downtown. They got a lot of stuff moving forward, and uh, I know that a lot of the plans they have aren't out for public knowledge yet, but um, some of it's pretty exciting, and so I'm uh, super excited to be part of the re-energizing of Downtown Billings. And today is their official grand opening. The restaurants will be open from 11 to 8. Zoo Montana's new bison exhibit is just weeks from public from opening to the public. Much of the credit to Valley Federal Credit Union for its financial support for the endeavor. Management and employees got a sneak peek of the bison exhibit Thursday to see how it's all coming along. The two bison, Bert and Nellie, are scheduled to be out for you to view at a grand opening near the end of November. During Thursday's special sneak peek, Valley Federal Credit Union presented the zoo with another check, this one for $25,000. You can find the Bison exhibit next to the zoo's homestead house.